Well, Joe, one of the things that has happened to you since we talked last year is the fact that you have resigned your position with the Los Angeles Police Department. And I remember reading one time an article where you told the reporter that, uh, that you needed that police work, but you've quit. Why? Well, it just became impossible to continue to function uh, and pretend that I was your everyday local policeman. Uh, no one treated me the same, not the people I arrested, not the victims of crimes, not the policemen I worked with. I mean, I just uh, got the celebrity treatment from everyone. I, guys I put in jail wanted to get parts on a police story as heavies. I mean, it just became impossible. And, and, and so I was finally starting to actually dislike the thing I loved so much, and that was police work, because I couldn't be a policeman. I wanted to be, and no one would let me. And uh, finally in March, I just abruptly uh, went home one day and called the captain the next day and asked him for a, a, an emergency vacation, and never went back. Yes. After 14 years. Now I'm going to get all choked up, and everyone's going to see I'm a sissy. Well, did they try to talk you into staying with the force? Well, uh, my boss, my immediate boss, my captain, knew that I could no longer function as a working detective, which is what I was. I mean, he's a smart guy, and he could see that. Uh, the chief of police wanted to make me a PR man, uh, keep me on the force, and make me a public relations officer. But that's not for me. I was a, I was a street policeman for 14 years. I, I couldn't suddenly uh, be a press agent. Of course, another thing new that uh, since last year, the great success of Police Story, and now you have Police Woman coming along. No, actually, I don't. David Gerber, who is our executive You're producer. You're not at all involved no, with that? No, Gerber has that. But I do have something else that I'd like to tell you about. We're going to do The Blue Knight as a weekly series with George Kennedy. We won't be on in September, but we'll be a mid-season replacement next year, uh, probably in January. Now that, of course, is based on the success of the miniseries. That, yes, that, he'll play the role that William Holden played. Yes. Why, why is Holden not going to continue? Well, Holden, I don't think, would want to be involved in a television series, number one. Um, and I think, frankly, George Kennedy is perfect for the role, as I wrote him. Uh, Kennedy's the guy that I envisioned when I wrote the role, Bumper Morgan. And I just think he'll be perfect. Did you personally know Kennedy, or did you just know him from his acting Just work? from his acting. Not, just, just from his acting. And, and when I envisioned a man, after I wrote the book, I don't usually think in terms of film, but after I wrote the book and I, and I had to think of an actor, I thought of George Kennedy. When Holden was approached to do the role, the first thing Holden said was, why don't you call George Kennedy? This is him, you know. Is and and then he right? agreed to do it. But William Holden's a marvelous actor, a marvelous guy. Yes. Now that you are no longer with the Los Angeles Police Department, and goodness knows you've always been an outspoken person, but do you feel an even greater sense of freedom now as far as expressing what policemen feel and so forth, Joe? Yeah, I'm afraid to read my next book. <laughs> <laughs> this will be the first one I've written as, a, as an ex-cop, you know, and uh, I'm working on it now. And, uh, What's the working title? Uh, there is none. I, I have a difficult time with titles, and I usually only put one on when I have to. After we go, we're ready to go to press, and they say, come on, give us a title. You'd and like to go up. Opus 1, Opus yeah, 2, yeah, Opus that's something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but at any rate, this one is due to come out very soon. Well, right? probably next year sometime. Uh-huh. Okay. Other things that, that I have read about you, Joe, statements that you have given, and one that really has stayed in my mind, and I thought the next time I talk with Joe Wemba, I must ask him about it, and that is that you were quoted as saying that you truly believe that jails are useless. Why do you feel that way? Well, I don't know if that's exactly what I said. Uh, well, that was the way it was in I print. See. Now, maybe you didn't maybe, say maybe, it that uh, Maybe someone asked if... Uh, if jails are useful to rehabilitate um, habitual offenders or something, and I said no, but that doesn't mean I'm against jails. I, I frankly think that uh, it's foolish for, for committee after committee after blue ribbon committee to say we are not rehabilitating these habitual offenders uh, b uh, with jail. Uh, well, of course not. I mean, after a man is a habitual offender, the pattern of his life is formed, and nothing is going to change it. The jail is to uh, separate him from us. Simple as that. doesn't mean that it shouldn't be humane. It should be humane. But please don't expect it to rehabilitate. I think when a man's um, uh, 30 years old and he's been in, in and out of jail for the last 15 years, he'll never change, no matter what. And uh, But some have, Joe. 
Well, you know, I guess, I guess there may be one or two, uh, you know, in a, in, a, in a a thousand or something. I The hypes that I used to deal with as informants used to always say that they never knew a hype that made it. They knew some who were off junk for a while, but after they had been addicted for long periods of time, they never knew one who, who made it, finally, you know. Now, I think that's a bit cynical, but that's what they would say, the people that were addicted, you know. That was their opinion. Um... So uh, I think that uh, we should stop expecting jails to do that which they can't do. There, there are places to segregate people. That's it, you know, um, simple as that. I, I, I think that people shouldn't get to jail until they've proven by a pattern of their life that they can't live in society. But once they've proved it, then um, I think it's too late to expect a man um, uh, to change, really. Uh, there are rare exceptions. I but what is the future for those people then? Just uh, to keep them in institutionalized all their lives? Well, I in, in the Onion Field, my third book, I, I deal with the subject of the institutional man, uh, and I, I find it very interesting the concept of the institutional man. I find that there are institutionalized people who are not in institutions, walking around uh, all the time, begging to be institutionalized. I don't say that they want to be in a jail, but they want to be in some protective institutional environment wherein they can function on some kind of a limited level of responsibility, uh, be it a, and they usually get there one way or the other. It might be a mental hospital, it might be a jail, something. They'll usually get in some institutionalized environment. I, I, I think there are many people like that. Uh, I used to arrest fellows who were relieved to be going back to prison. I used to arrest fellows uh, all the time who would violate terms of their parole the day after they were out of prison, subconsciously, you know, and I think I was sensitive enough as a, of a, as a writer to, to understand them. They would do little things to begin violating their parole so that they could get back to the ever-loving arms of the institution. Now, uh, I think that we don't have the right kinds of institutions to keep these people happy, but I think they're going to require an institution. They're going to get it one way or the other, because that's what they want. Now, that's the kind of people I was talking about, I think. I wasn't talking about just, you know, a kid that goes joyriding in the car. I mean, <laughs> throw him in jail forever. I wasn't talking about that. I was talking about the institutional man. Mm -hmm. Do you know of any countries that uh, have penal systems that you think are vastly superior to ours that we might try to emulate? No, I don't. I don't. Uh, and I don't think that there's a chance of, of perfecting one. Uh, France has a very low recidivist level compared to us. They don't get repeaters. But they're so cruel. Uh, they're, the dungeons are so ghastly that, uh, you know, there's been a lot of speculation that people commit suicide rather than go back to them, you know. Uh, but the cruelty apparently does uh, keep their recidivist rate down. But we, uh, in a more benevolent society, I hope, can't suddenly emulate their dungeons, you know, to keep the repeaters from coming back. We can't do that. So I don't think there's an answer, you know. They think that's an answer. Well, that's not our answer. Mm -hmm. How do um, psychologists react to your thinking on this subject? Have you ever discussed it with any of them? I've talked a few times about the institutional man, you know. Uh, to, to psychologists and to others, and uh, lots of folks think, think that it's interesting. Um, uh, people are kind of afraid of the concept because it sort of, it sort of um, uh, jeopardizes their jobs. That is, psychologists, sociologists, penologists, people whose job it is to rehabilitate an institutionalized person. You know, th they think it's too cynical to say that there are people who require an institution, let's create one where they can function. But uh, I, I think that uh, one day that a lot of folks are going to recognize that and there are going to be institutions created where people can kind of go, you know, can kind of be and, and function and live and we're going to have to support them there. We're going to have to face the fact that we're going to have to support them there for the rest of their natural lives because if we let them out, it's too expensive in terms of human life and misery. And I think that there are people who are going to function quite well there, but it's not going to be a jail as we know it, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Would it be something that uh, where they could be productive as far as society outside is concerned? Well, slightly. You see, we keep inflicting our values on these institutionalized people and saying things like, you know, you must produce as we produce, you must behave as we behave. No, I mean, you could know. they be? Could the institution be made self-sustaining? In other words, no. It'll no be way. a very expensive proposition, of course. Just like uh, 
any institution is a horribly expensive proposition, but I maintain that it's more expensive in terms of human life to release people like, well, in my book, The Onion Field, it's a true story, to release people like Gregory Powell and Jimmy Smith, who killed Officer Ian Campbell of the Los Angeles Police Department. They were institutionalized men. Gregory Powell's a terribly intelligent fellow who realized he was an institutional man. He never wanted to be out of the institution. His whole behavior pattern cried out to be back in. And eventually, he got himself in a situation where he murdered a police officer. Now he's back in forever. And I think he's content, you know. Um, there's a fellow named Eddie Bunker who wrote a book, No Beast So Fierce, which is bought by Dustin Hoffman for films. They may make a film out of it. And uh, I spoke to a uh, group of prisoners in Terminal Island. Uh, Eddie Bunker was a, in the class, was a creative writing group. Eddie Bunker was released last year. He'd spent almost his entire life in prison, 38 years old, now a successful writer uh, with uh, plenty of money. Uh, he was out about three months and he, he robbed a bank. Uh, Eddie Bunker is an institutional man. He didn't need the money. Uh, God knows he didn't need uh, the thrill. He did need the institution, and he couldn't bear it in the outside world, even with all the wealth that he would, would have been his as a writer. He's back in the institution. You know, I can go on and on like this. There are people who are institutionalized, and uh, there's nothing that can be done about it. Joe, thank you very much. This has been a most stimulating and provocative discussion. We thank you very thank much, you. and continued good luck to you. Pleasure.